lives in a pineapple under the sea. SpongeBob SquarePants! And in yellow and porous is he. Hey everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude. I am here to review Sleepy Time with... J53518. Don't just forget it, bub. Of course. And this episode is requested by Peter Griffin. What is the plot for Sleepy Time, J5? Hey, Squidward, you know what the plot is? SpongeBob visits the dreams of Bikini Bottom and finds out that dreams can become reality, no? SpongeBob, apparently, from his dream, decides to do dream hopping. Kind of like in Wreck-It Ralph and Rob is game jumping. You get what I mean? Going from one game to another invol involuntarily. Not only scaring Squidward from my favorite scene of the episode, from becoming a clarinet, SpongeBob discovers dreams, but the problem is, can he get enough of his excitement? Or will it cause panic and stress for the others of Bikini Bottom? I love it. It's classic SpongeBob. Who would have thought that SpongeBob could become Leonardo DiCaprio? Without the inception, if you get the joke. Dreams within dreams. I mean, hell, he didn't need Joseph Gordon-Levitt or Tom Hardy for this, man. SpongeBob can jump on a cloud and go into your dreams. I guess they could say that there's a new nightmare on Elm Street. His name is SpongeBob. So, Freddy, lock up your door, son, because there's an angry sponge on your way to rape your dreams. Sleep tight. It's funny. It's interesting to see what people... The great thing about this is to see what people think. So we start with Sponge Patrick. Guess what he thinks about? If you think he's dumber than a bag of rocks, he's dumber than a bag of coral. Because his dream is, as we all know, riding on a little horse with only a quarter. Really, man? A fucking quarter? Come on, Patrick. You're more imaginative than SpongeBob, and you're half as smart as this guy. You can honestly dream of maybe Krabby Patties or hanging time with SpongeBob as your as your best friend. But no, what does he dream about? Nothing. Just riding on a little seahorse. On a little seahorse like you see at the grocery store. So SpongeBob does his usual gagness and then moves to the next dream where we have Sandy as we usually have her sky jumping, sky parasailing off a plane. That's one extreme squirrel, if I ever saw one. So we know how the drill goes. SpongeBob goes into that dream, and then goes to the Mr. Krabs' dream. Mr. Krabs' dream is to get the Mighty Dollar, the Moby Dollar. My favorite one is Squidward's dream. Why? Because it has my favorite scene of SpongeBob. Squidward dreams of performing a clarinet solo for the King of Tuna. And what happens when SpongeBob gets in the mix? SpongeBob, why'd you stop playing that beautiful music? <laughs> so we all know what happens. So the gist of it is that earlier, later on in the episode, everyone wakes SpongeBob and says, "Stop bothering us," because come on, SpongeBob is useful. He's he's annoying. If he was annoying in Bikini Bottom. We figure out in this episode, he can be annoying in the dream world. Again, Freddy, lock up your doors, man. There's a SpongeBob invading your dreams. He's climbing in your dreams and snatching your people up. Are there any flaws? No. It's a classic SpongeBob of dreams with a sponge that went wrong at the right time. I sound like a pedo bear when I say that, but I'm joking around. <sighs> Sleepy time literally makes me want to go to sleep. I did not care too much for this episode. I don't hate this episode. It's just that it was boring. There are some funny moments. Like, I thought Patrick's dream was very funny. Like, I enjoyed Sandy's skydiving dream. That was pretty funny. I also enjoyed uh, Squidward's dream. I just finished doing the SpongeBob uh, clarinet sound. <laughs> I am terribly sorry if I traumatized you guys with that sound, by the way. But I actually thought it was hilarious, so probably the funniest moment of the episode, honestly. And the idea overall is creative. Like, yeah, it's interesting to see what everyone thinks. You could already know based on all of their personalities, but, I mean, it's nice to see what they think. So the episode is creative. I do like the idea. It's just that for uh, most of the episode, I just found myself very bored by it. I wasn't 
too entertained by it. It's not the worst. I'm just saying they're going, it's not bad. It's just really boring. And by the time the episode ends, I literally just want to go lay down on my bed and fall asleep because sleepy time literally makes me feel really sleepy. Oh, yeah, another positive. I did enjoy Gary talking. That was actually pretty cool right there. But like I said, while the concept is creative, that the storyline was just okay um, at best. Patrick's final line was hilarious when he said, does anyone have a quarter? That was funny to me, but like I said, sleepy time, I'm sorry, I just don't care for it. So I'm going to give sleepy time a 5 out of 10. It's not terrible, it's just boring. On his part, I could see that he has his own ideas, but on my side, on the happy side, I enjoyed it because it was a good study of the characters, how they develop later on in the series. That's all I gotta say. I say it's a 5 out of 5 for this critic. I love this episode. It's old school SpongeBob, and it's nice to see what a what if story. Again, the series is good at choosing what if stories for characters, from the main characters to the side characters. So it helps out a lot in differentiating them and making it unique from other cartoons. And on J53518's point of view, I could totally understand that. So yeah, don't get me wrong, I can understand why people enjoy it. I just happen to be one of those people that didn't really like it that much. But that's just my opinion. Understood. Now me and JFred3518 are here to review Suds, requested by Peter Griffin and Moises Parada. What's the plot of Suds? It's simple. I don't need the wiki for this. Apparently after getting himself a sandwich one night, because SpongeBob that stupid in his underpants, Jesus Christ, SpongeBob decides that one day he can't go to sleep, so he prepares a peanut seed, peanut butter, and jelly sandwich. When all of a sudden he doesn't open his fridge while sleeping on a snack, he wakes up with his house becoming a giant igloo, thus coming up with him the suds, a disease that makes him basically the hiccups for sponges. Now it's up to him to get to the doctor, with the help, hopefully, of Sandy Cheeks, the squirrel, and Patrick the star. I call him the star because he's a shooting star. No, not in a good way. Shooting down to hurt SpongeBob kind of star. Tiger Dude, I'll let you take care of this first. Suds actually entertains the hell out of me. This is way better than Sleepy Time, my opinion. From start to finish, I was entertained throughout. I was laughing my ass off. I got a big old smile on my face. I have no flaws with Suds, to be honest. It's a very well-written episode. It's clever. It had a very well-written storyline. It was paced well. I really enjoyed the aspect of Patrick being Sp SpongeBob's doctor because SpongeBob doesn't want to go to the doctor, and Patrick comes up with this whole bullshit that to make SpongeBob scared of going to the doctor. And they make you wait in the waiting room. No, but worse, when the doctor takes out his stethoscope. Then he touches your heart. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, I don't want to go in there again. Can you help me, Dr. Patrick? Oh, sure, beer buddy. And then, of course, uh, Sandy catches on with the whole shenanigans. So it was cool to see Sandy pop in, even though she technically doesn't really appear in the episode until, like, in the last few minutes. Yeah, the episode was just very well done all around. It was hilarious when Patrick literally made Spongebob look all worse. The the ending scene with him at the doctor's office and Hans grabbing Spongebob like he's a oh, real sponge. Oh. And uh, Spongebob gets a giant lollipop with Hans saying, here's your lollipop. And then Patrick wants to, you know, because of the fact he pretended to be a doctor, well, he got his comeuppance. Overall, Suds is one of my favorite episodes of Season 1. It's one of my favorite episodes of SpongeBob SquarePants. It's terrific from beginning to end. Very clever, very funny. I'm going to give the episode, of course, 
a 10 out of 10. How you do this right? I cannot say anything better that can give it justice. This is a great episode. To be honest, it's funny. It's another what if story, as most SpongeBob episodes are. It's a very interesting idea of oh, if SpongeBob got sick, how would he react? It's fun that Patrick tries to be the Dr. Doogie Hauser, I would say, in a way, the fake doctor, Dr. House, in a dumb way ever, by putting a piece of toast and butter in his foot and sticking his boot inside, doing weird shenanigans by pulling his teeth. That's not going to help. Oh, my God. By putting a Band-Aid on his back. Dude, go to medical school. You'll do fine. Well, I forgot, you're going to crash course it, you dumb starfish. Putting Band-Aids doesn't always work, dumb star. Jesus. And I thought putting a Band-Aid as a five-year-old sucked for me. I don't feel bad for SpongeBob, dumbass friend. Better? No. <laughs> Better? No. <laughs> God damn it, Patrick. You're hurting your friend. How, does, how does SpongeBob even survive having Patrick as a best friend? Like, God damn. The question I got to have is, how can he sneeze so much to blow up the Krusty Krab with Mr. Krabs inside? I'll give it a 5 out of 5. Please subscribe to J5351H channel. I will leave a link in the description below. And as always, this is J5, I mean, I mean, Bear, signing off. Good night, Gotham. So you sleep another day. Uh -uh. This is J5, see you later. I am 22 Tiger Dude. Don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!